ladies and gentlemen, it's my great pleasure to be with you this morning, um, particularly one of the first slots after Diana. How can you possibly top Diana? Very difficult. Um, my name is Debbie Wren. I work for JP Morgan. I'm an agile coach with JP Morgan. Um, I've been with JP Morgan roughly about 12, 13 months. Prior to that, I was a, a consultant out in mainstream. My last consulting role was with Tata Consultancy, so TCS. So I've worked a great deal out in India with the TCS folks and with many teams here in India. And I have to say, India is one of my favorite locations, so this is perfect for me. I'd like to introduce you to two of my colleagues who are going to help out today with what we're going to be doing. First of all, Tim Bourne. Tim, stand up. Get to know Tim very well. He's going to be your product owner for the day. Okay, so he's the man you're going to be working very closely with. And my other colleague here, Ashish. Ashish is going to be one of the scrum masters for the day. Okay, the good news is that there isn't a session following the session. So actually, um, we can run the full 120 minutes, which is what I was uh, planning to run but I will take a, a, a check around about 90 minutes to see if you're still wanting to carry on with, with where we're going. But I'm hoping that this is going to be the puller for you. Okay, so we know New Zealand is in the final, and I'm predicting a New Zealand-India final tomorrow. Okay, so by magic, this is going to be our challenge today. Bangalore, we're going to be building a new international cricket stadium for the final. Okay, so that's going to be our task. Before we move on to that, um, hands up in the room. I just want to gauge where people are in terms of uh, Scrum. So hands up those of you who are very new to Scrum, never done it before. Okay, just got one. Uh, those of you who've been practicing for uh, under two years. Okay, so we've got some who've had a little taster and a little, lip, a little dip in the water. Those of you who are experienced scrum practitioners, whether you're scr a scrum masters or not, come on in, ladies. Okay, come on in. Okay, um, any scrum masters in the room? Nice, you could be scrum masters for our game. Very good. Okay, hold you at it. Um, I just want to tell you a little bit about the logistics first before we go into a uh, description of the session. We've set out actually four tables because we're going to break into four teams. Um, the tables have actually got sticky notes on, so you'll see the two tables that's sort of in the middle there. The two ones here have got uh, sticky labels. I've already set out the game board for you, so you'll see how the game is going to progress over the course of the session, um, and we're actually going to be using that. We have tons of Lego, okay, so this is principally about using the power of game and play, which is the way our, our minds um, typically t tend to work, okay? So Lego is one of, certainly one of my favorite ways of um, instilling the learning into teams that I'm working with, okay? So that's where the four tables are going to be. You'll notice that there's a table set out here at the front. That is going to be used for... Um, the board that we're going to be um, using, and principally where we're going to be building our cricket stadium. Okay, so that's going to be our integration point, all right, because we're going to be running as four teams. You're going to be, obviously, working with your product owner to get items from the backlog, and you're going to be building your parts, and we obviously have to integrate them into our stadium. So that's going to be our integration table over here. Um, principally, however, this session is about how we can use the power of play to help us educate our teams in a fun way. Um, having fun is the best way for people to learn. They're relaxed, they are not under stress, and therefore they're more open to the thoughts and ideas that we, we uh, put in play. And Scrum being one of the perfect models, as we heard from Diana earlier on, to get you off the starting position and really instilling the agile values and principles into our teams and getting them understanding what it means. Okay? So that's, that's what we're going to be using, Scrum. And you know, towards the back end of the simulation, I'm going to talk a little bit about how we can use the same model to scale. 
So particularly at JP Morgan, one of the scaling frameworks that we do use is the LESS model. Um, and that's the one I'm going to talk a little bit about. Once we've had a go, we've had, a, had, a, uh, had you into the, into the role play. What I would like, my definition of done for today is actually that you understand how you could take what I'm going to be sharing with you today and turn it into your own variation of game for your organization. So I'm going to walk you through the various stages of how we run the simulation so that you can take that back with you. And if at the end of the session you would like me to share the collateral that I have on this, you're more than welcome. If we just get your email, I'll email those out to you and you're more than welcome to have the collateral um, that I've built up around this, okay? All right, so let's get started. Um, a few about the objectives there, we're going to uh, go through those. Um, Scrum itself, those of you who were in the, the starting session with Diana this morning, um, one of the important aspects with uh, the adoption of Agile, and in particular Scrum, is that it tends to be pretty misunderstood by most organizations. They regard Scrum as something that the tech teams do. Any of you recognize that? Yeah, that's something that our tech teams do. We don't have to worry about that. Not so. To deliver the customer visible value that we're wanting to deliver as technology teams, we have to have a very close and tight relationship with our business organization. Okay, and hence our product owners. Okay. The reason why we need that tight relationship is because we want to reduce the amount of time that it takes from the first point that we get an idea about our product to the time that we ship that code. Okay. Now, for that to happen, that sounds very simple, doesn't it? Yeah, we just create some scrum teams, uh, a product owner will appear, whether they are real or fake product owners, uh, and there is a distinction between the two. They'll just appear and magically we'll know what we have to build. No. Scrum actually is about organizational change. We have to change both sides of the organization in order to, to deliver the, the value that we're looking for. To work in a two to four week time box is challenging in the extreme for people who are very new to this way of working. Making that shift from a traditional waterfall based environment into expecting our teams to do a, a one, two hour training course and sud suddenly magically they're able to cut their code and, and, and be able to ship in a two week period, very challenging. So it's not as simple as it looks. The framework is simple. The enactment of that framework in order for us to deliver value is challenging and we have to close that gap and close the gap significantly between our business partners and technology. So we hence we have that close relationship. But we are going to be following, uh, and when you run the simulation in your organizations, I would urge you to include your product owners in the simulation. And you can use, I've, I've chosen Cricket today, and actually the game will work for whatever you want it for. Um, and I've spoken to Tim, you know, Tim's from, from the US. We could equally use it for baseball, any type of sporting event. You could choose whatever you want. I've just created collateral around a sporting event but it equally can adapt to whatever your situation is. Get those product owners in the room. Um, if it's a large product, i.e. it's a product that's made up of multiple applications, then get the product, the team that supports your product owner in the room as well, okay? And we have our technology teams in there, uh, set up and divided into scrum teams, okay? And in particular, feature teams. And I'm going to talk a little bit about feature teams on the next slide, but we want to be able to have our teams organized such they are able to deliver uh, the product for the simulation. And that reflects life. Okay? As we move into a scrum team, we want to make sure that we have the skills in the team to be able to deliver working tested software for our product. And if that means we have to cross multiple components that means we have to cross multiple components. It means the team have to either get the skill in there by organizing themselves uh, around those skills, or they have to learn those skills and learn them pretty quick, okay? So this isn't component-based development as such. 
this is feature-driven development. So we're delivering customer visible, customer value every two weeks into, into production. So that's the challenge. So we're going to be following this today. And on the tables there, we've got the simulation boards, which will show how you can um, set up the game and run the game so it follows our Scrum basics. F so from uh, the start, where our product owner is going to set some vision, we're going to talk about building our backlog, we're going to talk about a little bit around relative estimating, we're going to talk uh, about initial product backlog refinement. Those are our starting positions, and you'll notice on the card, I've got all of that as our, our starting point. Tim is going to be product owner, so we're going to work with Tim to build our backlog and understand which items we can pull into our first sprint. Okay. Um, as teams, you'll then break into the, the teams that we're going to put you into, and you will do sprint planning part two, where you're going to figure out what are the tasks that, as a team, in the simulation, you need to do to deliver the stories you've taken up, the items that you've taken up. We'll run the sprint. We're going to run the sprint for roughly 30 minutes for the first sprint. Okay. And during that time, obviously, you're going to work as a, as a team. And once we have your product built, we will do our sprint review. So Tim will be product owner looking at what you've, what you've got. And you yourselves at the tables will do your sprint retrospectives. Okay. Now, Ashish and myself are going to wander the floors and provide you with some additional learning so that you understand the basics and how that enacts. So the gentleman at the back who's never done Scrum before, you will understand this by the time you leave this room. Okay? You will understand each of these core ceremonies. And interesting, when Dinah was talking about the Agile fundamentals as being you know, the first step onto the, onto the path of this journey, that traditionally, and certainly in my experience, and I've been working with teams pretty much the same length of time as Diana, so as Tim, that first step and the team cultural change is the hardest part of all of this. It really is very, very difficult. Teams and getting teams to work effectively and understanding the basics and really embracing values and beliefs, that's the hard part. And Tim and I spend our lives with teams trying to get them over that first part so we can actually start to um, embrace the change and sustain and optimize as we move forward over time. So this session is about helping you do that. So you're going you're gonna to have a go at all of that today. Okay? And Tim, is he's a tough product owner. I have to tell you this. Okay? He's a toughie. So we're going to exercise your knowledge of Scrum along the way and reinforce some of that learning. Okay? All right. I just wanted to remind you, fundamentally, those of you who don't and have never come across feature teams, um, hands up those of you who do actually work in feature teams at the moment. Okay. Yeah. A couple of you good. Okay. Um, those of you who haven't, this is a definition of what we regard as being a feature team. And a feature team is um, focused on those customer visible features that we're delivering every sprint. So we're not building little tiny pieces. We're actually building real features that can be shipped out. Um, they are stable and long-lived teams. That means that they stay together for long periods of time. They work for the product owner. They are building the product. So for as long as the product is in existence, our feature teams are stable for those periods of time. Okay, of course, team members may come and go. That's life. Um, that happens. But you'll find your core membership, people will remain with the product for long periods of time because they are constantly learning. By the nature of point number two, they are cross-functional. That means we have the necessary knowledge and skills to complete end-to-end -end features. So that means rather than being focused on one single component, actually I'm getting to learn, particularly for more complex, larger product, pro products, I'm getting to learn about multiple components. I'm getting to learn about the different technologies involved in that. I'm getting to learn about all the things that are necessary to enable me to ship every two weeks, which in some organizations, as you can imagine, in an organization like JP Morgan, oh my goodness, it's massive. The challenges to get code out at the end of two weeks, you can imagine um, it's sort of the organizational inbuilt barriers that are in place 
and we have to break those barriers down. So a feature team is constantly learning and pulling into their sprints more and more capability. So often I get uh, teams that I work with, they look at that and they go, yeah, um, that kind of looks as I'll be bored within a short period of time. Not so, okay? This is, this is Diana's first point. We're having fun. It's a great place to be because we're learning all about this stuff. Okay. So cross-functional, cross-component. Um, generally, seven plus or minus two. I believe that we've the, the recommendations around that have are now up to kind of seven plus or minus three, really. The smaller the team, the better, because we want that collaboration to happen. Larger teams, you know, I, I go into parts of our organization, and the teams are like 40 or 50 large. And the first thing that you see as one of the significant problems is obviously communication, lack of collaboration, very single um, stovepipe thinking. We think as individuals, we don't, we don't want to uh, work with our analysts over there in terms of understanding requirements. That's the analyst's job to do. This changes that totally. We are learning um, and building ourselves up as what we know in the world today as T-shaped people. Any of you heard that term before? It's becoming more and more prominent out in the industry at this point in time. Organizations that are actively recruiting around the agile space or where they're actively looking at innovation and wanting to push the boundaries, they're looking more for T-shaped people, which means I have you know, a core competency, which we all have, but I'm also keen to learn other competencies and get some extra knowledge under my kit. So as a team member, I can step in and help at any point in time. I can go help my uh, you know, the core, the, the core um, uh, uh, testing, the analysis, the design work, all of that sort of stuff. Uh, we should all be able to contribute as team members individually and together. Okay, so that's a little bit about feature teams. Um, I'm going to cover that at the end because that's when it becomes more obvious. Um, and I want us really to get into the game so that we can actually get you learning how to run the simulation. Okay, so that, that set the scene a little bit about Scrum and feature teams. And I use this inside the organization for programs that are looking to switch to an agile way of working. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head how many people we've got. Is it like 20,000, 30,000 engineers, something like that? I mean, you know, thousands of engineers across the world. So pro as programs and products are looking to make what we call a flip, then we use all the things that we have at our disposal to help that learning process and then reinforce that through the support, coaching, mentoring, uh, technical coaching, all those sorts of things that Diana spoke about this morning. And you, you two can use this and exploit it to help your work with your teams. So fundamentally, we're going to work around this uh, Lego board this morning, the simulation board. We're going to get you to build your feature teams. Okay, So we're going to probably allow you to go to one of the tables so we can have a feature team. Okay, Some of you may not want to participate on an active basis, and that's absolutely fine. Some of you, probably like me, loves building Lego, so you want to get in there and build Lego. Okay, and that's all right. I'm going to get you to just set yourselves up with your team environment, so we'll get you some Lego, and you can distribute that and organize yourselves ready to go. And then we're going to build your backlog. Okay, so we're going to move on to the backboard there. Tim's going to present our vision for our world-class cricket stadium for the India-New uh, Zealand final. Okay, tomorrow. I don't know, what time is it, guys, tomorrow? The semi-finals, is it? No, but you're going to get through that anyway. <laughs> You've got the home support there, haven't you? You guys have bought all the tickets. Okay, so, so when's the final Saturday, is it? It's the final Saturday? Sunday, okay. Um, what time does the game start on Sunday? Oh, my goodness. Okay, so you're going to be up and about early on Sunday then. All right, so we're going to build that backlog and work with Tim in terms of getting out acceptance criteria, all those sort of things that we um, use to make sure that as we go into our sprints, our requirements are crystal clear. So one of the basic uh, tenets, really, of the framework is that as we, uh, as we look at planning out our work, 
the teams need to work together to really get a good understanding from the product owner what the ask is really all about. What are those underlying requirements? And we use a variety of different techniques in order to build that understanding. But Tim is obviously going to, in the space that we have, we, can, we have to limit the amount that we do. But you can also do the same thing. So we exploit visual modeling. We exploit uh, UML where it's appropriate. We explore drawing pictures. We exploit specification by example. We exploit all sorts of things to get our shared understanding of what those requirements are. Okay, So think about that. You've probably known it previously as um, product backlog grooming. Okay, What we're going to be doing here today is what we're calling initial product backlog refinement, building our backlog so we can drive our sprints and drive and prepare the work that our teams can pick up uh, in those sprints. Okay, um, We're going to have a little go at, at relative estimating. and I'm going to get Ashish to do a little bit around relative estimating. He doesn't know, but I've just kind of assigned him a task because I can do that. Um, so we're going to size the backlog. Okay. And um, Tim is obviously going to be building his release, uh, his release plan based upon that. We're going to see if there's any risks that we may have identified. Okay. And we do have some extra things in play. We have cards. So into the simulation game, we have risk cards. We are going to be having um, review cards at the end of it. So when Tim looks at your thing, he's going to hand you a review card. We're going to adjust the capacity of each team by handing you out capacity cards, and you're going to have to re react to that in terms of how much you can actually do in your sprint. So we're going to do the things that we would expect to do in a real life sprint. Okay? And into the game we go. And you're going to obviously work out your capacity, and you're going to do your tasking. You've got post-it notes there for you to do that. You're going to complete your build of the things that you've taken up. And then we're going to integrate in, but you can integrate obviously at any point in time <coughs> onto our center table here. And we will review, we'll inspect and adapt via retrospective, and on we'll go to sprint number two. So I'm hoping to get through two sprints this morning. Um, we'll say we'll run the, the full two hours and get the most out of it because it's um, for your learning. Are we ready? Are we set? Oopsie. Let's go. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if we can organize ourselves around the, there's two tables here, two tables there, which are set up to for the each of the feature teams. As I said, those of you who don't want to actively participate, fine, absolutely fine. You can sit around the edges and just watch. Those of you who do want to get into it and have a go and have the act of learning, um, position yourselves around those tables at the table. We'll go for, let's say, 10 at each table, okay, to make our full complement of feature teams. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's form our feature teams. Away you go. Reorganize yourselves into your teams. You know, research shows us, and in fact, I had an article that I, I saw in the Harvard Business Review last week. Research showed us that having ladies in your team, <laughs> actually, you form better teams. You absolutely form better teams. So, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, if you've formed an all-man's group, I suggest you find yourself some ladies. <laughs> that, is, that is official research. That's not me making it up today. That is research confirmed. Okay? I think there's a shortage of ladies over here. And a shortage of ladies here. In fact, these teams look pretty similar to what I see in J.P. Morgan. <laughs> okay, shortage of ladies. Okay, all right. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to now go around and I'm going to distribute some Lego to you all. I want you just to set your workspaces up, sort your Lego out. I'm going to give you sort of 10 minutes to get yourself organized into how you want to work. Um, I have some pens over here, which we're going to distribute to each of the teams if you want to write things down. But first of all, let's get you some Lego. Yeah. Yeah, give. And all working together on one product. You know, you may want to negotiate Lego pieces. Okay. 
there, guys. Okay, you need some room. No, I've checked with them. I can run it for two hours. Yeah, I can run it for two. I've checked. Yeah, we're okay. Because there's nothing after me. And it can run to lunch. And I checked. Yes, I checked with them. Um, you want some... I'll give you some pens. Some pens for you. There's some pens for you guys. Some Sharpies. Okay. Some pens there, some pens here, nice, okay. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I do have some um, common components in this plastic bag. I'm going to leave those on the centre table and as and when you see what articles you're going to be picking up, you know, feel free to raid the bag. But they're little tiny little itty bitty pieces which may be useful for your build. There's plenty of board. Okay. So this is how you would set your teams up at work. Um, focused on, there are four feature teams in this room today. We are going to be working off the same shared common backlog. But you may want to have a bit of white paper up for your, scr your, your scrum board. So you are going to be doing task planning. Okay, task planning. Okay. Right. Um, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, um, can we confirm, because I saw a show of hands of scrum masters at the beginning of the of the morning. So, table number one, is there a scrum master in the team? Guys over here, scrum masters, have you got a scrum master in your team? Oh yeah, we've got some here. Tape. Uh, where did our blue tape go to? We're just getting it. Yeah, we're just getting the tape for you now. There you go. Okay. There's some tape here. Feel free to put it up, set your table up. Make sure Once you're set up, okay, introduce yourselves, guys, to each other, and make sure you've got a scrum master in your team. If you haven't, then we will act as a scrum master for you, but it'd be good if you can do it for yourselves. All right, we all set to go. I'll just wait for the team on the left-hand side here. Okay. So you can follow whereabouts we are on the sheet of paper that I gave you, a little scrum guide. That's going to form the basis of today. So, nice, nice. I did. Absolutely. We all set? I'm just letting everybody introduce themselves to each other. That's a good thing, and we'll get going. Okay. 
Introductions done? Nice. Well done. Team number two, introductions done? Okay. Now, whilst I go over there, um, create a team name for yourselves. One of the important parts of team working and in feature teams is a team, a team name, some identity. So some create names for yourselves. Guys over here, are we done with introductions? Nice. Got a scrum master? Nice. So what I'd like you to do is just spend a couple of minutes coming up with a team identity, a team name. <laughs> the name of your team. Nice. Very good. Panther. Team Panther. Woohoo. Guys, when you finish introducing yourselves, if you can spend a couple of minutes coming up with a team identity, so a team name. So when we work in feature teams, we like our teams to give themselves a name because that's all part of that bonding process. Okay, Panther. Lego friends, nice. Got a team name? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All part of how we work in future teams is to get people to know um, really embrace team working concept. Give themselves an identity and give themselves a name. And that way we then get people jelly mold together. Okay. So actually by self forming these teams here, and I'll cover that before we move on to the next one, uh, we do, um, you can run uh, self forming, self-organizing team events where you get all your people in from a particular program and you run a, a you know, half day to day session where people understand what it means to work in a, in a, in a feature team and the team environment. They um, take a look at what skills we need in a team to be a true cross-functional team and as a team, what are the sorts of skills we need? And it's not just technical skills. Actually, some of the best teams I've seen working actually have a lot of the soft skills as well. That's so, so it's pretty much like uh, speed dating. They go around, they interview each other, and they form themselves into their own teams based upon the results of their interview. So they have the freedom of putting themselves into their own teams. It's not a management thing. The minute it becomes a management thing, we are stuck in the command and control um, environment. We're trying to get out of that. So self-forming team events, very good for doing this. So hence, that's why we've had you self-form here. And in your simulation, do exactly the same thing and build in all sorts of aspects that you, I mean, obviously you can do it. I normally run these over a whole day so I can actually include more of this theory in it before we actually get going, okay? We got a name? Yep. Yes. Nice, let's, uh, let's advertise ourselves on our board. for a couple of minutes before we actually go across and we take a look at our backlog. The exercise we've just been through, albeit that it's been very, very quick in terms of getting you to put yourselves into teams and forming yourselves as teams, we can actually, we actually do that for real. So inside JP Morgan, um, for large programs of, of, of work, we get everybody into a room, and we've done this in, in rooms of 100 people before now. We get them into, into large rooms, and we run a self-forming, self-organizing team event. And at the end of the day, we have feature teams who have put themselves together. Obviously, we've run through a whole lot of, of, of theory associated with that, just so people understand things like, what, is it, what skills do we need to be a good, effective team? Um, what what aspects of that are important to us. Um, we get people to advertise their technical skills and their soft skills on their little, um, little labels. And we do more or less speed, speed dating. So <laughs> we rotate around the room and have a look at who we've got and so on and so forth. And we run it actually across numerous iterations or sprints in order to get teams well balanced and people happy with where they are and embracing the team concept. Um, the teams are not formed by the management team. The teams self-select, okay? So given a whole group of people, we get them to form their own teams, 
okay? And that way we end up with a better, we c they can't, the teams can't now go, yeah, but I was put in this team, you put me in this team and I don't like it. Actually, they've taken, it's the first step towards taking responsibility and ownership. Um, we've now put that ownership into the teams, and that's the first step towards being self-directing. Um, okay, so that's a good thing. Right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're now going to build our product backlog. I'd like to reintroduce your product owner for the morning, Tim, nasty Tim. He's one of the um, more challenging product owners for our cricket stadium. He wants this built, he wants it built quality, he wants it fast, he doesn't want excuses, he doesn't want the yes but, yes but, none of that. We are hosting the final on Sunday in Bangalore and he needs that stadium built. On time, quality not compromised, but he's going to run through with you the things that are important to him. Tim, would you like the... Uh, Very soft spoken. Yeah, As a product owner. Yeah. Yeah. See where am I? I've got stuff. There you go. okay. Thank you. You guys hear me okay? Yeah. All right. So um, what I've got here is a number of cards representing each of the features that I that I sort of sorted out. Come on down here. And I've I've they're not in any particular order, but I've sort of clumped a couple of them because they're similar. And the only thing on there is a description which is a sentence or two, and the business value. We sort of worked out what we thought the business value would be. Um, you'll notice that there's no acceptance criteria, so that is something that we can discuss and negotiate. And the reason I threw the blue line on here is because I often have discussions about, well, my first position as a product owner is, I want all of it, and I want it tomorrow. You, go, you okay with that? And the, and the usual response is, no, I don't think so. <laughs> and so we negotiate a bit about, okay, what can I pull down below the line that you guys think is, is reasonable, but I'm pulling a collection of things that actually would be cohesive, such that if we get to Sunday for the event, the things that I've chosen actually make sense. So for instance, one thing that I consider essential is the cricket ground itself. As a groundsman, I want to have a main cricket pitch so the cricket matches can be conducted. Business value, 10. It's very important. So I'm just going to assert that that has to be part of my minimal viable product. Okay. We can talk about these other ones. Let's take a look here. Uh, premium seats. So the celebrities with lots of money want to come and, and watch the event, but they're willing to pay extra. As a product owner, that revenue can be plowed back into the stadium. So I like anything with revenue. That's important to me. So give me some nice seats with shade and uh, you know all the usual stuff, cushy seats, whatever people like to have, and we will charge them 10 times the price. Um, this one's somewhat important. It says uh, manual scoreboard. So in the event of a power failure, not that we would ever have a power failure here. We had five yesterday at my hotel. Uh, we would like a manual scoreboard so that we can continue, right? So somebody's going to have to be out there turning over the numbers on the board. I don't think that this is terribly expensive. You tell me. You're the experts. But it has a lot of business value to me because we're going to be hosting the event and it would be awkward for us to not have a scoreboard. Uh, these... What is the business value? I gave it. I gave this one a nine. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I would like a place, a pitch, a cricket pitch, so we can actually have the event. I would like premium seats because I need revenue from somewhere. That's going to help me make this a better place because after the finals, we're going to keep this stadium around and we want to plow the money back in. You'll see that there are things down there that have to be funded that don't fund themselves. This is going to drive that. So I'm looking at funding as high business value for me. Uh, the manual scoreboard in addition to an electronic scoreboard, which is lurking here somewhere. Uh, these are all related to advertising. So the first one is switch out advertising boards for the side screens. So the screens around the edge, I want to be able to swap those out with advertisements. So we can go get a JP Morgan and stick it in there and they'll pay us lots of money. And then we'll pull them out and we'll get some other company to pay us lots of money and we'll swap that in. Here's the sponsorship. We want to have a nice big board in prime locations. Okay, and here's one that says sponsorship. I want to have smaller adver advertising boards scattered around the grounds for people to trip over, and the companies will pay us money for that. Of these, I don't actually know which one's going to bring in the most money, but I think this is another case where I need the funding. Let's just arbitrarily pick one. Yeah. Which one? The middle one? You like the middle one? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 
So this is the, the as a match organizer, I want to have big board in a prime location so I can sell prime advertising at a premium price. I like all those words, premium. That's, that's, that sounds like lots of money. That's good. Merchandise stalls. So, you know, the fans, they want to spend money. We would like to help them spend their money. So we want to have the T-shirts <laughs> and the hats and the, and the trinkets. So, you know, if we can have stalls for our vendors, we'll get a cut of that. That's, that's revenue. Uh, commentary box. The announcers want to be up high. That's an important thing. And we want to have them get a good view, so make sure you position it so that they can see what's going on. It would be very awkward if they were out in the car park. They couldn't really talk very well out there. <laughs> so be careful where you put it. Parking facilities. Now this one's special. It's not just parking facilities, but it says, as a fan club, I want coach parking so we can park nice and close and bring in lots of people and take very small space in the car park. Well, that sounds like maximizing revenue to me. So let's, let's talk about coach parking, see if you can arrange that. And these three are all related to refreshments. The first one is about food. This one is about soft drinks on the west side. This one is soft drinks on the east side. Which side of the stadium is better if you're a, a fan and you wanted to sit on the east or the west? Which would you sit on? Either way, doesn't matter? No? East is better? Sun will be in your. So east is better. Yeah. <laughs> east is better. We like east. Okay. So um, east side. So we'll go with east side because uh, I suspect if there's any advantage on one side over the other, that's where your premium seats will end up being. So let's make sure that the premium people don't have to walk very far to spend more money for the soft drinks. All right. Uh, restrooms. Now, you know, what's the option? If you don't have a restroom, what have you got? So now we're, now we're into the, mm, you know, I really don't want to pay money for this, so do it as cheaply as possible, but how many people are at the stadium on the match, typically? How many? 80, yeah, 80,000? Oh my god, I underestimated. I thought closer to 60. Okay, 80,000. You're going to need several restrooms. There is no acceptance criteria here, but I suspect we should talk about it. I've been to some really poorly planned stadiums, this one needs some thinking. <laughs> uh, dressing rooms. Those, those, those whiny players want a place to change clothes. They don't want to do this in public, standing on the edge of the pitch. <laughs> I, I can't understand it, okay? So you got to come up with something, but do it as cheaply as possible, because this one doesn't generate any revenue for me either. And uh, selling tickets. That's essential. Business value 10. I need a way to sell tickets, so give me a box office. The other one is uh, supplemental we can negotiate about this one. If you do all this extra work, here's an option for selling tickets by having vendors wandering the car park after the game, being able to print out the tickets for subsequent games and sell them to people, or wandering the car park as people arrive so that they can buy tickets without having to go to the main box office. They can actually feed in at any location around the edges. You like that idea? Yeah. Okay, but this one's more important because this one says sell any tickets. So we have a central box office, right? If I have to choose one, this one's easy to implement. Build a box, stick people in it, you get a printer, you queue up. Okay, let's go with that one. Uh, emergency services, when people break an arm or a leg or they faint or they have a heart attack. Uh, that one doesn't generate any revenue either. I'm gonna leave it above the line for now. We'll just stick them in an ambulance and send them off to the hospital. But as a future feature, I'm willing to negotiate and we'll give them some space for that. Let's just leave that one up there for now. Player side screens. I'm trying, so I, I admit my ignorance. This one says player side screens. As a player, I want to have side screens on the side of the ground so that I can bat well by viewing the ball movement. Important? Yes, Not to me. I'm just a product owner. That looks like an expense. Convince me this is important. That's important if you need good performance so that it's effective as well. So it's no, no, it's not important. Not important for the product yeah, owner? They, they I don't they own they the team. I own the stadium, the right? <laughs> So, so as a, as a world-class stadium, yes. you would need side screens. That looks like an expense. I, 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 will, I will let you build this one if you do all the other ones first. Good to have. Good to have. I'm with her, right? This, this feels like good to have. It won't start without it? Is there a rule in cricket that says you have to have those? Oh, shit. All right. All right. You convinced me. If that's, if that's a rule, then we're going to do it. 
I don't want the umpire saying this stadium doesn't pass muster. So, all right, fair enough. Um, we'll need some. Sorry. We, oh, what did I forget? Oh, the dancers. Oh, all right. So the teams don't bring their own dancers. All right. So what's the business value? How do I get revenue out of dancers? Yeah, they come for the cheerleaders. I thought cricket itself was entertaining. I didn't realize the dancers were part of it. All right. So, so, uh, oh my. And, and what is the business value for dancers? Is there another rule in the rule book about this? No? Okay. It's not required, but it's important. This Right. How much? How much? What is the business value? Convince me this is going to make money for me. Oh, because people come through the gate. Okay. So what do you think? Five, six, seven. Sponsors. Sponsors like dancers. Can can we put sponsor advertising on their belly? No. Maybe. I'm just thinking out of the box here. Okay. Uh. Well, we'll figure that out. Well, I don't know. We have no acceptance criteria. <laughs> we have no description either. If you have dancers, if you have dancers, our stadium yep. needs to support them very fast. Oh, you put the dancers in front of the premium seats. Yeah. All right, all right. I'm starting to see the, right. Got it. Well, this is getting very interesting. I'm learning a lot about cricket. All right, so I'm glad we caught that one. Thank you for that. I'm actually going to put it above the line for now, but I suspect <coughs> that we may get back to that one, especially if you can convince me that this is going to draw more people in. So I'm good with that. Yes, we did. Yes, yes. We got, yeah, that's good. Anything else I'm forgetting? So. Oh, the cameraman. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, can, yeah, Ashish, can I get another card there, please? I'm cardless. So, thank you. Perfect. What's the big difference? The collaboration. Collaborative. It's visual. Oh, we've got you around the board and team as the product. product backlog items buried in a tool. <laughs> How many of you just get assigned product backlog items to go do? Okay, yeah. yeah. So this is one of the key behavioral changes that we're looking for in order to make Scrum effective. Okay, and the, the framework really holds together. It's one of the practices out there, uh, comes from Kanban, uh, visual boards, um, uh, radiators, everything on there so we can actually communicate, ask questions, get understanding, and build relationships, okay? And product owner doesn't hide away in the business somewhere. Product owner's out with you and engaging with you. Yep. Now, we can talk all sorts of things about, at the end of the class, about, you know, the trials and tribulations of distributed working. It does work, but we obviously have to invest in it, and we can give you some hints and tips around that. But certainly this is what one of the mechanisms that we are actively encouraging and all the feature teams to be actively encouraged with combined. So getting things out of the tooling, you need an element of tooling, but tools should always support the process, not the other way around. What, in my experience as a, as a consultant before joining JP Morgan, I used to find teams were slaves to tools rather than they understood the process and were able to enact the behavior and the principles and values. So this is one way for us to start stripping things back to bear and putting in place the things to help people enjoy their jobs. Okay, we've noticed that we've run numerous experiments over the past year and we've noticed distinct differences in the teams. When we can liberate them from you know, the shackles of tooling and get them engaged like this, these items are transitory, they'll come and go. Yep. Once we've built it, the th most valuable thing we have as a software team is working tested software. Everything else is uh, irrelevant, pretty much. Okay, so just a quick review. Below the line now, I've selected things that I think would constitute a usable stadium 
if we can get this done by Sunday. So let's put your thinking hat on here. Minimal viable product, a cricket pitch with premium seats. Got to have the revenue. Manual scoreboard. So we'll just start with a manual scoreboard. Cheapest, fastest, no electronics. We don't have to order something fancy. What? Minimum cost. I like that. Uh, sponsorship. This one says we've got places so we can put big boards out there for our advertisers. More revenue if you can do that. Uh, merchandise stalls. We want to sell stuff. More revenue. The commentary box. Get them well positioned so that they can have a commentary. Uh, parking facilities for the coaches. So the, the buses will come in and park somewhere close. We can get in lots of people with relatively small space. Refreshments on the east side. We decided the east side was preferred. So people on the west side will have to schlep around if they want to get a drink. But for now, we'll have rest uh, uh, facilities there for that. Uh, restrooms, make it as cheap as possible. <laughs> it doesn't generate any revenue unless you start putting coin boxes on there, and I don't want to go there. Uh, oh, yes, thank you, yes. <laughs> Great. Uh, dressing rooms, once again, make them inexpensive. I don't care if it's a curtain in a corner. Just make those those guys happy. Uh, a ticket box so we can sell some tickets. A uh, place for the TV camera crews. We're going to be blasting this internationally. Thank you for catching that. I don't know how I overlooked that. And uh, side screens for the players so that we conform to the rules of cricket. Obviously, we want a stadium that meets the regulations. So if we had all of that, we could go on the air on Sunday. Yes. Did you already have some developers? Yes. I've actually got uh, a marketing department that is, is out there lining up all kinds of stuff. The more placement you give us, the better, but, but we need something to get the revenue going. So, yep. All right. Does that sound like a minimal viable product? We could be on the air on Sunday. All this other stuff, you know, people break an arm, we throw them in an ambulance. We'll fix that later. <laughs> yes? No, the, the order is not, th I need all of this. Okay, so we went from all of this, and actually I've got a whole bunch more in my pocket, to, to this subset. I'm trying to strip it down, and I suspect our next step is probably a sheesh for sizing so that we can then step into uh, the first part of Scrum. So. extend that more extensively with, with other techniques. Very powerful. So as we go into the sprint planning, the requirements are very clear to us. So we, we, we've already, if you've not got requirements in your sprint, those are very clear, and we're now going into to start our, our build, build and test process of the, of the, of, of the process. Um, and that's very important. So you may well decide that as four teams, you've got to collaborate on some part first um, as you do your spring planning part two, before you can get started putting the nuts and bolts together. Okay, so I'm going to see how that pans itself out. Ashish. Yeah. Okay. So, what we'll do is quickly, uh, you know this card, I'll read out this card. You have to tell me, a uh, show of hands, is it a high estimate, a medium estimate, or a low estimate? Just three figures, okay? All right? Show of hands. On high, you raise your hand. On medium, you raise your hand, and then you look around the room and then give a final consensus estimate, okay? We have just consensus on what do you think this will, this is the complexity of, of this activity. Sizing it, all right? So, groundsman, uh, cricket ground, I want to have a main cricket pitch so the cricket match can be conducted in the ground. So high, 
Okay, look around. Everybody on high. Okay, hands down. Anybody medium? So what's the consensus? High. Neil, send me here. We are just doing T-shirt size uh, kind of estimation. Yeah. Uh, we are just rushing through this, so yeah. Yeah, but I think in the real world you'll find that as a team you will have a discussion among the high and the mediums, right? And that's the key part here. Uh, maybe we'll do for one of the more complex ones, right? So the second one is premium. good view so it's all about the premium celebrity guys okay highs medium small medium small you guys want to have a quick conversation about the uh, complexity here how complex that is we <laughs> see uh, because we are talking of a few holds uh, the number of seats available for the rest of the crowd so in that sense uh, it should be medium it's not complex to put together the seats with the premium again we're talking about the complexity here that's the estimation side right we will be having special material, more comfy, more a ACs and all Hands that. Up. All right. So last, another round. You heard the high, the medium, and the low. Final. Good. Manual math scoreboard. High, medium, low. 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 Quick reminder, we had a high on cricket ground. We had a medium on the premium seat, and now you're saying low for the? How is it looking relatively? Constructing the scoreboard is not com uh, yeah, sorry, constructing the scoreboard is not that going to be complicated as look at you know the p building a pitch or yeah. constructing the the seating thing. So yeah. it's um. Yeah. As the media of construction. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> all right. So we're all good with low. So I think you just notice that we what we have just done is a relative estimation here, right? You looked at the high, the medium, and now you're looking at the low as well. Yep. I want to have big boardings at prime locations. So again, high. Let's let's raise hand for high. Okay. No one. Medium. You guys, medium. There at the back. Okay, low. Okay, this seems like a split here. Let's have some conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Let's hear, let's hear. Okay. Then we'll have a the act of constructing and putting up the billboard, in relative terms, the effort required to build those is no more or less than the scoreboard that we put up. Thank you. Yep. It's a location, prime locations, and then go for it. It's in the public area, prime location in the city, and then find it and advertise it. Then it then also it's a medium. Okay, last final vote again. Hi, no one. Medium, medium. Raise your hand. Medium. Low. What do you guys want to go with? Low. Low. Merchandise stalls, merchandise stalls, buy low. merchandise, low. everybody low? low. This is sounding, you are all getting used to your estimation. <laughs> Commentary box, medium, medium. low, medium. parking facilities. We can maximize the number of fans. Medium. 
couple of medium. Let's have ask a medium. Because it's just a parking space. You just need to make up a tar road and put up dividers. What's the big deal? much to a parking space. Okay, another round of vote. Medium now or low? Medium? Medium, raise your hands. All right. You guys get convinced easily. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> restrooms. Yeah, basic restrooms. Tim doesn't want to spend any money on that. Medium? Low? Low? Medium, raise your hands. Raise your hands. All right. Oh, I missed that one. Okay. All right. Refreshment stalls, shopping stalls on the east side. Let's start with medium. Anyone? Low. Dressing rooms. Uh, dressing room. Uh, keep my kit and change. Low. Low. Poor players. Okay, we got some other voices now. Let's show, show of hands. Show of hands. For medium, medium show of hands at the back. Show of hands, medium. Medium. Okay. Low. Low. Okay, we again got a split. So we just need uh, space to cover. <laughs> Covering space, they might walk out. We need more things like we need the lockers, we need mirrors, we need shoes. How, how are the other mediums? Let me quickly give you a uh, premium seat is a medium, a uh, commentary box is a medium, a restroom is a medium. Does it sound in that category? I mean, So the would not pay anything. Like All right. Last vote. Last vote. Medium. 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 Can you shout medium? Medium. Ticket box office. Sell tickets outside the stadium. Sell tickets outside the stadium. Anybody who says not low. Low. TV placement for cruise. TV placement for cruise. Medium. Low. Low? Low? All right. Side screen, side screen, side screen. M medium? <coughs> Let me start with medium or low. Anybody low? Only one, two, only two? It's just a white screen with, uh, with wheels, so there's not, it's nothing much. No, we need those. Uh, the technic, the technical part should also be taken care. It's not just about yeah, having the screen. Okay, quickly, I'll quickly give you. Stalls low, uh, box office low. Everybody good? Low. We are good. Okay, we are going with low last. All right. All right, guys, so you have your estimation done. Yeah, 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 the hard guys here again. Okay, so, so now that I've got your estimates uh, and the business values, I would normally be able to put this in some sort of an ordering and uh, Initially, all of your teams would be basically guessing or speculating about what you could actually consume. That's the way it is. Subsequent to that, you'd actually have a velocity. Um, for today, we're going to skip over that ordering, but here's what I'd like to do. Uh, do the math with me. If a high is three, a medium is two, and a low is one, let's add these up. So that's a high, that's three, plus a medium is 
five plus a low and another low and a low and a medium and a medium and a low and a medium and a medium a low a low and a low 20 divide by four teams okay now you know about how much each of you can consume just because I'm going to absolutely speculate out of thin air that each of you can produce about five units of work okay there's the work pick it so guys in your four teams I'd like you to pick the stories you would like to the items you'd like to take up uh, so we can actually get into the sprint and start doing stuff that's right Play with those um, again so there's two things point out collaboration uh, who can who can relate to me the third agile value around customer Collabor customer collaboration over contract negotiation that's not a vendor supplier uh, statement in there um, don't forget your product owner he's he's around okay uh, and don't forget you're all building the same product so it's not a competition between you all so you need to figure out um, figure out things okay all right so ladies and gentlemen let's get building I'm gonna let you guys go for about 20 minutes okay and let's see how you get on items okay I will leave you you there's certainly good knowledge and experience in the teams as far as scrum is concerned so I'm gonna leave you be to figure out what your next step is gonna be all the hints I'm gonna give you is collaboration 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 Thank you. 
with you. All right. Our, uh, our, our property uh, acquisition folks have, have secured some ground for us. So we actually have a location. This is uh, several hectares of, of property. And uh, <coughs> after we uh, signed all the contracts, we've learned that uh, the local council has uh, some issues with uh, some of the property. So there's parts of this that are actually in dispute. So that's the ground you have to build on, but there's uh, some disputed turf on there uh, that we need to sort of work around for the moment until we can get it resolved completely. A little uh, risk, a little uh, ambiguity for you to, to sort out. <laughs> Any questions? I like your thinking. She said, can we sort it out after the match? Play the match, get the revenue, pay people off. I like it, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> that is brilliant. All right, thank you. <laughs> Woo -hoo. Last minute adjustments before the review. Yeah, yeah. Last minute panic. Good heaven. Uh, can I get all of those back, please? I just want to make sure we've got uh, all of the cards recovered. Then I'll have a look at each one of them. Oh, yep. Thank you. Excellent. This sprint. Um, you guys have clearly made lots of progress. If we open the gates on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it looks a little shaky, huh? All right. Yeah. Uh, I do appreciate that some of you actually asked for acceptance criteria. That was very wise of you. Some of you did not. Let's see how that works out for you. <laughs> we'll go through these one by one uh, for whichever team it was that had the player side screens. Um, okay, can you please show me the player side screens? Okay. I don't know cricket. Is two sufficient? Yeah, two is a good number? So you accept that one, you think? Okay, I, I need your help on this, though. Some of these uh, white and dark, side screen, white, dark, two pairs, on rollers. Oh, my goodness, they've got all kinds of fancy variations. Look, it's got wheels. Holy cow. <laughs> really? You just move it around? Yes. Oh, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Uh, the cricket pitch. Oh, dear. Is that the regulation size? <laughs> yeah, 22 yards. It is? Yeah. You sure? If this is one acre, like that is 22 like yards. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll get proportional. It's yeah. proportional. I'll, I, I'll get a sheesh out there with the ruler to measure it. <laughs> All right. 
good, good, good. And oh, oh yes, we've got uh, requirements on turf, spin fast, grass, wet, dry, good stuff. I, there's no acceptance criteria, but apparently somebody gave some thought. Mm -hmm. I hope you made wise choices. <laughs> Did you check with the bowlers to make sure that this is what they wanted? Yes, the Indian bowlers, exactly. <laughs> yeah, find out what New Zealand doesn't want. <laughs> uh, dressing rooms. Yeah. Please? Yeah. Where? Yeah. Oh, oh, I thought it was the one with the glass front. That would be <laughs> interesting. <laughs> okay, <laughs> good. <laughs> right. It has a door. It has a door. Yeah. yeah, the door was optional, but I can understand how you'd put that on there. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I don't want to pay any yeah, extra. Yep. Yeah. I, I can see that. Yeah, the because when the, when, the, when the batsman is batting, yeah. in the dressing room, you can, you can see people changing their clothes. Ah, and that's a little bit difficult. Yeah. So the dressing room should be away from the side. Not yeah. the side. <laughs> 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 there you go. There you go. <laughs> the dressing rooms are not there. No, I know the there you go. Okay. That was a quick change. Thank you. That didn't cost much. All right. Uh, my ticket box. I need revenue. I need to sell tickets. Where's my ticket box? This is That's a ticket. Uh, in front of parking lot. This oh, excellent. Here. Excellent. Okay. And everything's squared away. I can put people in there with a printer. I've got power. Yeah. Yeah. Computer, Computer, yes. It has power backup too. Power backup. Oh, thank God. <laughs> Love it. Only three counters. Only three counters. Well, we're fortunately, we're going to be doing sales 24 hours a day from now until the game of the, the, the match. Um, refreshment stalls. Where are my refreshment stalls? Who built refreshment stalls? Which team? Not included in this. Right, so, hmm, I think that the team members who didn't do the refreshment stalls will have to carry baskets of water around <laughs> for the entire match and sell them to everybody so that people don't dehydrate. Okay, so that one didn't make the cut. Uh, merchandise stalls. Uh-oh, same team? What's going on here? I can't sell swag. Wh what's going on here, guys? My revenue is dwindling quickly. Merchandise? merchandise, yeah. As a cricket lover, I want to be able to buy cricket team merchandise to show support for my team. Oh, more revenue. Bad. We went round and round on the restrooms. <laughs> that was a hard one. Oh, that's a beautiful restroom. But not near to the premium seats. Not near the premium seats. Premium seats has their own why did we not put it near the premium? You don't want that. You don't want that? No, oh, okay. Why? A security issue. People, people who go to the bathroom are bad people. We should keep them separated? <laughs> Everybody has needs access to uh, the restroom. Yeah. Not the premium seats. Premium, seat. premium, premium, premium people seat don't go to the bathroom. <laughs> they have their own bathroom. I don't understand. I feel we should have two sets of restrooms. Yeah. One for the premiums and one for the So, other so next, the next version, you build nice ones. Yeah. Okay. But, but we meet the minimum criteria. Yeah. Yeah. We're not yeah. going to have a disaster. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> this is good. This is good. Sponsorship. Boy, I'm really counting on some revenue here, guys. Yeah. Show me what you got. Yeah. Yeah. Three of them. Yeah. Oh, and that one? No, that's the scoreboard. Oh, that's the scoreboard. This one, this one, yeah. Three. Why only three? <laughs> well, that's, that's going to... Is it prime? Oh, they can see. Yeah, yeah. This is criteria. I want... Oh, this this one's got some shade, but, but that's on the north side. Yeah. We'll be plant sell goggles. Goggles. But wait a minute, wait a minute. The the merchandise thing fell through, so you can't sell them anything. Sell it along the ticket. Okay, so premium seats, I'm glad somebody got some shade, but Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two, two is good. Two is good. Okay, so we're we're north of the equator here, right? So, so most of the time, your sun is going to rise in the east, swing across the yeah, south, fall in the west. The sun actually. Right. This these these guys are going to get baked. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't like where the premium seats are. I think this is going to be too hot. I'm not going to pay for that. Yeah. No. Air conditioned? Yeah. But they That's shade. not on there. That costs shade. money. <laughs> <laughs> but they have shade. Even they are in yeah? the north, they no, have no, shade. See, see, listen, listen. 
the game starts at 11 o'clock. Yeah. Right. Okay. The sun would the sun would be somewhere. Sun will be here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. And you have a shade here. Yeah. You have but a shade. But here. if I'm sitting here, we have a shade. Big shade. Big shade. Big shade. Yeah. 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 Invisible shade. Brilliant. Retractable. And we will have hawker right. selling goggles there. This is retractable. Yes. I mean, I mean, depends on the where the sun is. Is there a better place for those premium seats? That would be a security issue. There is a risk actually. Yeah. Okay, what let, let's what risk is this? Yeah, yeah. Not completing the comfortable seats with good views. But the good views has everything to do with positioning. I'm just looking at this thinking if the sun is over here in my face, isn't there a better place? <laughs> no, I'm just trying to see if you can because this is adjustable shape. So that one's that one's a little iffy, right? I'm I'm not so comfortable with that. This is the coach party. Got it. Okay, we're almost to the coach parking. So this one says manual scoreboard. We absolutely have to have a scoreboard. Where? Oh, two. Excellent. Excellent. And it looks like a great big sticky. So we must be giving them a giant marker. Brilliant. Everything is stickies and scrum. I love it. Uh, the commentary box. Where? Okay. All right, and, and uh, I see it's got a glass front, so they're going to be very warm. We have AC, but it's Thank not you. completed. Next phase. Thank you. Next phase. Yeah, we did talk about soundproofing. We didn't mention the air conditioning, but now that I see this in, in position, I'm thinking those people are going to bake. <laughs> no, that would be great. No? It's on the inside. Yeah, the sun inside. comes around here. What yes. time does the match end? It's a day night. <laughs> now it is midnight. In, <laughs> in the afternoon, the sun's over here, right? Yeah. It's over in the west. Right in the glass windows, it looks like a solar cooker to me. <laughs> I'm thinking we should put them on a rotisserie and cook them. <laughs> oh, the, sh the magic shade, I forgot. All right. And then the parking facilities. Where do I put my coaches? Right there, near the tickets. Oh, this is normal? Okay. Oh, you put the coaches over there? All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good. Land yeah, unfortunately, the land dispute was a bit ambiguous. I quite liked your solution, actually. Yeah, we'll do it. We'll Thank you. Lots of money. We'll pay them and That's right. <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> okay. So uh, two items clearly did not get done. Uh, the premium seats I wasn't very happy with. I would, um, we would probably do better on sprint two. We would actually firm up the so non-existent acceptance criteria. The position or the yeah. Quantity? Uh, so every time I raised an objection, you guys had <laughs> things like invisible uh, sunscreens. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was the position that I could stick with to say I'm not happy with it. So these two clearly missed it. This one is because we had ambiguity around the acceptance criteria that you guys are going to get boxed in. Yeah? And that's one of the lessons here. And the rest of these all look uh, screaming. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> well done. Okay. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, great. if you can just take your seats back at your tables. I just want to spend 10 minutes. Uh, wrapping up and covering off some aspects with you. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you enjoyed that little interaction. A couple of things I want to cover off with you and help you understand how you can uh, run this game in your own organisations. Generally, I run it over the course of a day, so roughly about four or five hours. That gives me a chance to time box appropriately so we run over more than one sprint. The important thing when you run the simulation, and I have you know the order and sequence that we do things in, so that you, if you would like to have a copy of how I run it, you're more than welcome to have a, a copy of that. But when you run the simulation, obviously you need to make sure that the teams that are going to come through the simulation understand the basics of Scrum, or you can use this as an opportunity to do a little learning lesson with them, teaching lesson in terms of what Scrum is all about and the basics. Then you want to simulate all the essential ceremonies of Scrum. So pretty much as we had Tim up at the board there doing uh, you know, visioning and product, back, uh, product backlog, a little bit of product backlog refinement, uh, initial product backlog refinement, Certainly, we, we simulated uh, sprint planning part one, albeit a little bit loosely given time constraints, but you want to simulate that. You want the product owner to offer up the cards to the teams. The teams take up based upon 
their capacity. Okay, so you can get the teams, you can hand out capacity cards pretty much as I did, make some capacity cards up and hand them out randomly so your team has their capacity uh, restricted. That's a good one to help them understand that's life. People go off sick, they have vacation, they get, uh, have to go and do other things, which means that actually you, the amount of time that you have available for building working tester software is reduced, and you have to factor that in. Then you get into your sprint, and you want to run it exactly the same way as you would do an ordinary sprint. It is time box, so you set your timer, you tell them they're starting, and you set the timer at the back end where we finish, um, and you would expect the teams to go through the usual motions. So pretty much, we did it on a very low scale in here, again, with time constraints. You want the teams to do a uh, scrum board, a visual board. Now, if they've never done that before, use this as an opportunity to help them figure out, um, you know, what a scrum board looks like and how they can maximize the information on that scrum board, including having a little burn down chart to, ma to manage their progress, all the learning points around visual management, you can build into that. And that's another important learning aspect. Run, run the sprint with obviously people doing it. And again, the good thing about today actually was we had four teams and it was about collaboration. That, although this is a, a, a simulation and we're in a bit of a false environment here, that is the sort of behavior we want to see in our feature teams and our scrum teams. We want people having conversation. We had a little group out here, Tim called, called it out uh, and, and, and said, hey, look at those guys collaborating. You came together. And that's atypical. When we do initial product backlog refinement, that is about requirements and making sure that we use different techniques as t a team, and, a, and when I say a team, the entire uh, set of four feature teams, you all come together, you collaborate together to clarify requirements, to, to um, tease out that acceptance criteria from your product owner using techniques like specification by example and uh, any other techniques that you have available to you to get clarity. Okay, and then obviously once we, once we get through that, as teams, you will decide whether or not you need uh, design workshops to follow shortly on. And then again, design workshops are collaborative affairs where uh, the developers get together and you design together, jointly together, okay? And that's a choice. Some teams don't need it, other teams do need it. It just depends where you are in terms of your product development life cycle. But these are all the things that you can build into your simulation as learning points. So I've run this for different teams who are at different points in time, and I've made sure I understand about the team before I run the simulation so I can actually introduce different learning points within the simulation. So they actually come out of it with that learning embedded in their minds. And of course, most importantly, things like acceptance criteria. Okay, as we said, specification by example in our uh, backlog uh, refinement sessions. Um, People always forget that in the simulation, learning point. Collaboration with your product owner, essential. You know, teams work together with the business and product owner on a daily basis. We want that to happen. It's that constant exchange of, of thoughts and ideas that clarify where we are at any one point in time. Get to the end of your sprint, and again, another learning point for the team if they've not been through it before, is the sprint review. Now, most people, and this is probably based on my experience, think that that's just a demo. Not so, actually. Sprint review is the product owner's meeting. He runs, he or she runs the meeting, and it is about reviewing what has happened during the sprint, including if things in the business have changed that we need to be aware of as development team members. Um, so it's, it's the product owner's opportunity to also reveal what's happening in, in the outside world so that we understand that as we start to move forward, the product owner should be the one who actually has his hands on the keyboard trying out the bits of software that you've built. Now, obviously, there's cases, again, where you are at different points in time. It may not be anything which he can actually get his hands on, on the keyboard because it's maybe just a... Um, a bit of uninteresting interaction between two, two systems. But the fact is, where possible, we want product owner and or stakeholders to be able to interact with the software directly during sprint review. Okay, so it's the product owner's meeting to review with you what you've built, and it's for you to share and to celebrate what you've built. Okay, and including other things. So again, 
use the simulation to really help the teams understand the importance of doing this. And then finally, of course, wrap up that each of the sprints with a retrospective so the teams again, um, and according to where they are in terms of levels of maturity, have different teams using different retrospective techniques. So again, this is a learning point for Scrum Masters. Use different techniques during the simulation to engage with your teams. Okay, we want them wa walking away from the simulation excited about the way of working, embracing the ways of collaboration that we want to bring out, and for you to be able to explore with them those learning points that you've not been able to cover off. Again, I normally run through normally two, if not three, sprints worth uh, in, in the game. We've obviously restricted it severely for the time limits here, but very, very powerful. Okay, that's running through the game. Um, I just quickly want to flick back in terms of, that's it, in terms of, you know, I basically follow through each of these, so I get them to think, you know, size their backlog, um, assess the risks that they think might be uh, in play. I get product owner to introduce a few more risks as well, so we actually have a bit of uh, variance in there. Um, understanding capacity, and again, each sprint you can vary the capacity so the teams understand they have to um, plan for that capacity and adjust the capacity and interact with the product owner early if they think that their capacity has now um, severely dented their ability to be able to deliver the stories they've taken in or the items they've taken in. That's important. Share the bad news early. It's easier. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, select items. Task planning, we go through them, through with them. And again, you can spend a lot of time around task planning. It's one of the things that people uh, who first start out struggle with. Because they think, well, yeah, we'll have a sticky for uh, design, we'll have a sticky for code, and a sticky for test. Okay. Reality is, for any one end-to-end -end feature, you're probably looking in the order of magnitude of 30 to 40 um, tasks. And of course, the, the um, driving factor for your tasks will be your definition of done. That gives you a hint for the sorts of things that you're shooting for. So definition of done, I get the teams to do as part of the simulation, the same as definition of ready as well. So we can bring in all the different dimensions or keep it very um, loose and stripped back. Daily stand-ups, we can run through uh, sprint review, retrospective, and then, of course, run it for as many sprints as you can get away with. Now, if your product owner side of the, uh, of the partnership um, perhaps is not as you would like it to be, then I would use this as an opportunity to get them in the room so they understand the, a, the demands on their time, but more importantly, how they have to interact with our teams. Okay, there's that constant communication and collaboration. It's not, I assign something through uh, a well-known tool, or I send the teams a spreadsheet, or I do anything else. Actually, it's face-to-face -face conversation, albeit physically face-to-face, -face or via telepresence, or some other mechanism of um, video conferencing. Those sorts of things. Very, very important. Get them engaged in the simulation. Because if your product owners aren't engaged, um, you're gonna, it's going to be challenging for your teams anyway. Okay. And I just very quickly wanted to flick back to the one point, which was you can exploit the game. And in fact, we did scale here to four teams, all working on the same product. And all the trials and tribulations that happen when teams get together and have to collaborate. So... Um, the continuous integration, making sure that we do that frequently and regularly so we actually can iron out some of the issues. I think on our product here, we had some fairly late integration problems because we had left it to the back end. So as soon as something is there, integrate in, make the cost of change cheap. Okay? We want that going in there. Um, you could actually start to show your product owner just glimpses of finished articles as you have got to them just to double check and show that actually progress has been made. You can vary the game considerably to get that buy-in. Now, in terms of scaling up, the framework that we actually am employing at JP Morgan fairly significantly across the patch in many parts of uh, the line of business is around less. Um, Laman and, and Basvoda's uh, framework. Um, it scales beautifully in terms of its simplicity. It exploits the simplicity of Scrum as it is, 
once you understand Scrum for one team, this just exploits the fact it's just more of the same. We just do more of the same. And uh, less, there's two parts to uh, the less framework. You know, um, less part one, or framework one, I think, how does uh, um, Laman says fr framework one, is for mm, roughly 10 teams or less. So roughly where we're getting 10 teams um, per the for the product single product owner, we can employ uh, framework one, and there's a framework two for teams beyond that. Okay, and this is for a team for teams who are working on the same product. Okay, which is the important part of the scaling process is making sure your product owner, a is the right the right product owner, but more importantly. They understand product ownership, and we understand our product. Product does not equate to application. Product is customer visible uh, value from your organization. So hence, actually positioning your products correctly is the first challenge any organization facing developing um, in this way of working will face. Most people assume that just because we have a, an application that that's a, a product. Uh, not so. It may be the case if it's an internal product that we're building for something, but certainly as far as the main core uh, makeup of our organization, we're building products for customers on the outside world. So therefore, we need to know what those products are. So make sure you understand that, and then, you know, the numbers of teams that we need to build products, that's where the scaling comes in. You know, we, we go from, you know, one team to, I don't know, what's the largest you've ever had to working on one product? So 45 teams Tim has had working on the same product backlog. Okay. Now there are some subtleties in the scaling. You know, uh, one product owner, if your product is big, often does not understand necessarily each and every nuance in the detail. Very difficult to do so. So he can, um, he or she can, you know, seek the help of some very close friends who will who will support him. But at the end of the day, we want one single product owner who is responsible for that product. And they can they can sort out the prioritization issues that we normally come into. Okay, so hence use this, exploit this technique um, to get that level of understanding into the organisation and get your product owners in the room, so that most importantly we can ask questions, and secondly we can get them understanding where they are. Okay, and the same goes with your your teams. And um, finally, I just want to say thank you so much. I am confident it is going to be an India-New Zealand final. <laughs> my money is on India. I am in India, so I'm supporting India. That's where my vote is going. I wish you all the best with the game on Sunday. I'm looking forward to seeing what comes out at the end. Um, thank you for, for participating so actively. I really appreciate it. More importantly, I want to thank Tim for being product owner. He's never, he doesn't know cricket, but he knows it now. Um, and Tim and Ashish for walking around the room. Um, we are hanging around for a, a period of time because we've got to tidy up and, and so on and so forth. But if you have any questions, uh, Tim, myself, Ashish are around the whole conference. Either talk to us today or stop us in the corridor. More than happy to have conversations on our experiences. Um, that's the beauty of these sort of conferences. We can network and chew the fats, as they say in good Aussie, um, and have conversations and learn from each other. I, I learn every day of my life. I'm never done with my learning, despite having been at this for too many years that I care to think about. Um, I cover my grey hair, and you know, Tim has let his grey hair come through. Um, I'm never done with learning. I always learn something new. Whenever I come to these conferences, there's something new in there for me to take away, and hence, I'm always happy to have conversations. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Have a good conference.